It takes a special kind of person to move towards somebody who is actively and wantonly murdering others. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video is surveillance footage of officers stopping an active killer in Dayton, Ohio in the United States. This one is not particularly graphic except towards the bad guy, but it is a sensitive issue and I do want to warn viewers about that. But I do think there are a couple of important lessons here and enough time has passed that I think we need to look at it. Today's video is brought to you by MagTech Ammunition, the exclusive supplier of range ammunition for all active self-protection training. There's so much information out here about this one. This guy with his back to us is our murderer, and he has come out in the nightlife in Dayton with his sister and another friend. He has a long history of uh, being a far lefty Antifa guy, has you know uh, posted a bunch of stuff. Go read the news story, links in the description. It's a whole bunch. So he left them about 12.15, his sister went back to their car, changed changed his clothes, grabbed a backpack that had a, an AR style pistol in it and goes back over to the area. Now we have different multiple footages here. So you're going to see at 1.05 in the morning, he starts shooting and murders nine people that are right in the vicinity of where he was, including his sister. Police don't know if he did that on purpose or if she was an accidental death in that. But you see people scattering here and now you see outside the bar where there people are trying to, to crush to get in here and it's a big deal. Now within 32 seconds of him starting his rampage, police are going to respond. You see the shot's still ringing out. He's shooting the car up and that woman running away and off and more people are coming. You can see the police officer in top left corner. You see the officer here as our bad guy actually goes by him and the officer shoots at him. There was cocaine in the system of our bad guy as well as Xanax and I think alcohol as well. And so he is pretty impervious to pain, but finally the officers are going to get him enough time there that they stop him right there. And like I said earlier, within 32 seconds of him opening fire, officers were there. We see three of them, Dayton's finest here, who are going to trade shots with this guy, pistols against a rifle wielding attacker. And when he comes around that corner, they're finally going to get enough. It says in the, the news story that he was shot 30 times before he finally went down. The police officers were able to get him down and that's where this one ends. Scary stuff for everyone involved, but I am incredibly grateful for the brave men who stepped in and stopped that guy. There's a bunch of lessons out of this one, so let's get straight to them. First lesson here is don't ignore warning signs. This particular murderer showed a very far left Antifa kind of Marxist ideology and he was known. He had actually been investigated by the police, had threatened to shoot up his school. So friends, when you see somebody like that, you have to listen to the warning signs. Second of all, again, his family members were not involved in this in any way, but this guy had some significant issues. Uh, didn't really have any police record though. So you can't necessarily, you know, see from that past behavior. A lot of times these guys have been bullied and nothing else that is going on that's going to warn you other than the, the warning signs of him uh, getting after things and making threats and those kinds of things. Secondly, you can see shots start ringing out at 1.05 in the morning. Now, I, I think that this one came about 12 hours after the shootings in El Paso. So those were the middle of the day. But we do talk about the rules of stupid. And, you know, we say don't go stupid places with stupid people at stupid times and do stupid things. In my opinion, the bar district is a stupid place. One o'clock in the morning is a stupid time. And I would suggest staying away from those times. I don't think it was a huge contributing factor here other than a group of people that he felt like he had access to. Next, you see people running. I think that is the right answer, but don't just run away from danger, run to safety. The natural inclination when you hear gunfire is to duck and get away from it. And I think that's not a bad answer, but notice that everybody's flowing into the same place and that creates a, a bottleneck. So run to safety, not just to danger and running towards a crowd is not necessarily it. Now, if we look here, you see this one victim or intended victim here that he is going to shoot at that car and that person's going, oh no, what do I do? What do I do? The answer is to keep moving. Most bad guys cannot hit the broad side of a barn with a firearm and certainly past about 15 yards. So if you can keep your wits about you and keep moving, your chances of being safe in these kinds of incidences are significantly better. So keep moving. And that's exactly what we're going to see them do here. 
uh, is that you're going to see him start shooting up the car and trying to hit all around him, but that person is going to run off and run into the bar, and that gives a safe place. So keep moving, if at all possible. Again, not just away from danger, but to safety. Now, I want to notice here that the officer in this uh, particular screen is running towards the threat. And this is something, and one of the reasons that I have such, you know, a gratitude towards law enforcement. When everybody else is running away, which they should, police officers are running to the sound of gunfire in order to interdict it. And that takes a great deal of emotional fitness and some professional level training. I don't think just just police officers do that. I see private citizens do that as well. And I think we can be trained to that level and do that, but it takes a great deal of emotional fitness. So you need to actually get your fitness up to that level so that you can protect those in your vicinity and in, in your world. Now notice as well that our bad guy right now is running uh, you know, uh, from left to right against that guy. However, our officer is actually getting shots on him. Again, he was shot 30 times in this particular instance before he went down because he had a combination of, uh, you know, uh, of uh, drugs, he had a combination of prescription drugs, he had alcohol in his system, and he's all amped up, and he was wearing body armor. So uh, a, a significant thing here that, again, the news story says he was wearing not just a vest, but actual body armor. So in your marksmanship training, you got to recognize popping him once may not do it, probably won't do it. You're going to have to hit him multiple times. And that's why these officers stayed after him. Whole bunch more to think about from this perspective from all of us as well. I want you to notice we have multiple officers here who are getting after this guy. And I hear this all the time that people talk about, well, John, you know, we don't really care about stance and shooting and all those things. The stance is completely irrelevant because you'll never use stance in a real gunfight. I think that this still from these officers proves the lie of that. You notice here that all of these officers have a good two-handed grip on the pistol. They have a good fighting stance. They've got their body armor squared up. They're doing exactly what they're trained to do. And so having a high level of training absolutely negates this idea that you won't stand still or you won't get good accurate hits. Training matters. You can use good stance to get good hits and you'll need that, especially at some distance. Now notice here in top left corner, right underneath the uh, you know zero one there, officer has his pistol mounted light out. And, and that's not wrong. I mean, it's, it's not wrong for him to put some more lumens and, and more candela on the bad guy. But this kind of thing I see all the time. You notice people that say, well, I keep a, a, a light on my pistol, whatever. Now this is nighttime. It's one o'clock in the morning, but notice how bright it is outside. There's no need to identify a target here. You know exactly who the target is. So there's no necessary need for a pistol mounted light. Again, it's not wrong to have it. And I, my guess is, is he actuated it by accident. But I also want to notice what our marksmanship challenge is here. That these guys are not close. I'm going to guess that the officers that are shooting at this guy are doing so from about 10 or 12 yards with pistols against a, a rifle wielding attacker. Yes, it was an AR pistol, but he's shooting rifle cartridges with a, a full hundred round drum in it. Now that said, I think you can win a rifle, a, you know, a fight with a pistol against a rifle wielding attacker. I absolutely think that you can do that if you're trained to a high level. And these officers clearly were trained to a high level, had a high level of marksmanship. But again, they had even a higher level of marksmanship because this dude had body armor on and they, you know, we're going to have to put shots in his head because the body shots were just not doing it. Which is why we say you hit him several times, then you reassess and if you need to change targets, do so. Now, there was uh, some stuff in there about the fact that the officers were, um, that, that two of the victims were shot by officers, one who took a grazing wound from one officer, and then a second one who was um, shot by officers but already had a fatal wound from the bad guy. So I'm not going to give the officers a hard time about that. I am going to say, you notice again, these guys are working in tandem, and okay, fine, whether you're a private citizen or you are an officer, you want to stay paying attention to your world. We talk about the rules of firearm safety and they really are important in a real world environment. You have to be aware of everything that's going on around you and keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction. Only press the trigger when you know that the shot is going to go where you intend it to go. 32 seconds from the guy that this guy, time that this guy started murdering people till officers took him out and put him down. And I think that's incredibly exemplary. And I do think that in these rare instances, yes, the officers were already on scene and were able to get him down. That said, I do think that the answer was, was that there was good people who were well-trained and well-equipped who were on scene. And often that's not going to be police officers, which is why I tell all the private citizens in my world, every fan of active self-protection, that you are your own first responder and you have to be ready to stop that threat. Because unlike cases like this, in the vast majority of instances, officers are not going to be there in time to save you. And so you must take action to protect yourself and your family. I also think this is a great reason that we all should have spiritual fitness because again, nine people lost their lives that day. And, and those people, 
need to needed their spiritual fitness that day. They needed to say everything they needed to say to their family. They needed to be right with Jesus. So you want to get that done today, just in case you don't know when your last day is. Better have emotional fitness as well. These officers had incredible marksmanship. So a lot of lessons to learn out of this one. Let's make sure we take them all in and cover our ASP.